so today we'll be having four more questions on uh, from the question paper series it's going to be a crash course one hour four questions so i'll share my screen first so we have four questions for today the first question is a two part question it's on turret exostosis and cafe's disease and both of them are for five marks each So the first one is turret exostosis. If you know what it is, it's a if out of five marks, you may be able to get about three marks. And the second part of the question is again, cafe's disease. If you know what it is, you're going to look at about three to four marks. If you don't know what it is, you're looking at zero. So these are questions which are a hit or miss. You don't really know whether you're going to get uh, marks or not. So idea is not to waste a lot of time on this because you don't really know whether you're going to really get the correct answer or not. If you're sure you know what cafe's disease is, what Tourette is, you can write for it. But if you don't know, there's no point beating around the bush because getting marks is very much dependent on whether you know what it is or not, because these are all named conditions. So for example, if you get something like an Osgood Slatter disease, and then you write about Perthes disease, you don't get any marks because it's very, very uh, particular. The question is very, uh, very, uh, <laughs> very, uh, what do you call uh, definite that they only want to know about apophysitis of the tibial tuberosity and not of anywhere else in the body. Okay. So to start off, what is Tourette's exostosis? Okay. It is a benign uh, exostosis. It's, it's basically an exostosis. So basically they are benign osteocartilaginous lesions. Okay. And they occur most commonly in the hand but they can also occur in other small bones like the talus. Okay. So they are, we were talking about your Exostosis started about seven or seven. So they are benign osteocartilaginous lesions. most commonly occurring in the hand, but other small bones can also, small bar flat bones can also be involved. Okay, like the talus. So just like any other exostosis, this is going to be a bony swelling. So they are immobile swellings, hard in consistency, Okay, there is no, definitely if it's hard, you do not check for uh, the, uh, the signs, what do you call it? The uh, bellotability as well as the pressure signs. You don't check for any of those if it's a uh, hard swelling. Okay, and why do they occur? Okay, so etiology is unknown, but the most probable etiology is a, relatively mild trauma, which leads to a reactive periosteitis. Okay. Mild trauma, which has given rise to reactive periosteal reaction. So that is the etiology. Okay. Uh, it could be the subperiosteal reaction leads to a subperiosteal hemorrhage. The periosteal reaction leads to a subperiosteal hemorrhage, and that leads to the osteocartilaginous lesion. And that leads to the uh, paraosteal, paraosteal bone proliferation. So that's it about uh, turret exostosis. You can draw because you need marks. Okay, so if you have to draw, uh, let's say you're drawing the hand. Thumb and the rest of the fingers. So in the hand, again, we will draw the bones. We'll only draw the bones that are important to us. Let's not draw the entire thing. So you have the distal phalanx. You have the proximal phalanx 
and imagine from the proximal phalanx you are having a lesion coming out this way okay so that is it rods exostosis plus then the carpal bones that is the carpal complex okay okay one two three so this lesion here is your turret exostosis okay very similar metaphyseal in origin okay so it's very close to the growth plate so it's going to be metaphyseal in origin something else you can write and of course we have not written about uh, the uh, the management so uh, investigations you can get an x ray done you can get a ct scan done but they are all not necessary okay because there are benign lesions and for the treatment you can talk about excision biopsy excision biopsy and along with this you can write that there is a recurrence rate rate of about 20 to 25% okay so that's it about uh, turret exostosis uh, again hit and miss if you don't know what turret is if you don't know uh, then of course definitely don't waste time on this come to this question when you are ending your paper okay of course if you are drawing draw better because your skin will be somewhere over here so when you are drawing the skin so that's a bony protuberance you are going to get <laughs> fine so that's about turret's exostosis we'll be moving ahead to the next question which is caffe's disease again caffe's disease named condition i hope my uh, thing is visible or uh, the ink is visible it's green in color deependra can you confirm this please hello sir yes, yes sir the ink is visible right yes sir yes sir so the name of this condition is caffe's disease the uh, generic name of this condition is infantile cortical hyperostosis okay if you know this much again definitely this is one mark for you here infantile cortical hyperostosis okay now this of course happens in babies because it is infantile occurs in babies till the fifth month of life five to six months of life okay so what happens what is this it's basically hyperostosis that is excessive formation of bone so there is excessive formation of bone so where does this happen this happens most commonly in the mandible uh, in the jaw okay so mandible most common location however other bones uh, of the uh, other flat bones are more common the ribs uh, the collarbone the pelvis all of these can be involved so the clavicle ribs uh, long bones can also be involved and in the long bones ulna is the commonest however other bones like tibia fibula femur everything can be involved okay all of them can be involved so 